So guys, what you're trying to do is you're practicing this, remember? Is you're trying to not have 50 different words. The extra words is our vocabulary, not the dogs. There's nothing wrong with place. And then of course, if he moves or tries to follow, put the dog back and just say place again. You don't need to have 20 different words. Yeah, there's a major distraction, look. This Set. monkey here. Stay. Junior, move. Thank you. <laughs> the fewer commands, the better, guys, to be honest. Because, for example, look at Rex now. You know, he's deaf. I want to be able to just have a hand signal instead of having to learn full-blown sign language to make him stay. Okay? But that's what you're doing verbally with your dog. Which is excellent. Okay, those that have been doing place very well, I want you to break your dog. <clears throat> and that can be a distraction for some, because then it's excitement, right? Very good. That's excellent. Nice. Now I want you all to be doing it with a bit less vocal. I want you to focus more on how you're feeling and how you're touching your dog rather than being so vocal with the dog. Come on, here, this way, good, good, good. Because what happens is being vocal is a clever disguise for us sometimes to let out our nervousness and trepidation. Oh, uh, be, be good, bad boy, good boy, bad boy, you know? So try and try and just be less vocal and focus on how you're touching your dog. Okay, let's do it again. Oh, listen to that, nice and quiet. Beautiful, yes, Junior, well done, you're beautiful. Okay, this time we're going to increase the challenge, which is when you come into the middle, you're going to get your dog to look at you in the middle before you can move to the other side. I don't really mind, just like this, look at that, beautiful, boom. Go on, Marley, just like that. Yeah, it's just like pressure. Oh, of course, yeah, I understand, I understand. Sometimes just dropping the leash first. Just drop it, yeah, yeah. He, he has to maybe just learn to walk with the weight a wee bit and then you're able to pick it up. And I would do that in the house as well. Just maybe clip on, drop it. Let him get used to walking. And then we now again, just pick it up, drop it. But within a day or two, you'll be comfortable with that. Do you know what I mean? So this time you're going to come into the middle. I don't care if your dog is sitting, standing, lying. I don't want it lunging or anything. But I want your dog to be able to um, get a, your attention to you. And then you move to the other side. Let's have a wee go. Into the middle. There's the challenge. Try and get your dog to have a wee look at you. When your dog looks at you, reward it, move on. <laughs> Marley, you do what you like. <laughs> oh, well done. There's nobody in the middle, so we must have managed to succeed in that. That's excellent. Excellent. Remember, round about me right now, there is a big space. If you want to give yourself a wee bit more space or whatever. Which is wonderful, guys. One of the single hardest things that people can do or struggle with is to get their dog's attention in a distraction situation. That is probably, or most definitely, the main thing people call me for is because they lose their dog's attention with certain triggers. What we're doing here is creating some triggers and trying to get you to get your dog's attention. Wonderful. Okay, move backwards away from your dog and, and release your dog.
Gorgeous. You're a hockey shepherd, so you are. Wonderful. And your goal is to try and keep your dog beside or behind you, not in front of you when you're coming near the challenge, okay? Position is very important to the dog. This way. It's gorgeous Dobie here. <laughs> Lovely Kurigan collar, love it. Yeah. Very nice. Bit of bling. This is excellent. And if you come out of the mess, go right back into it. Excellent, guys. And Marla, you just sit at the side and watch, okay? <laughs> Love it, guys. Brilliant. Excellent. <laughs> 